All right, welcome back. Now we're going to close out this algorithm lecture with a discussion of correctness and a summary. So here's a reference text. If you ever want to get into algorithms and learn more about this, this is the reference text. Every computer scientist doing any algorithms work has that single textbook on their shelf. You have to ask yourself, is an algorithm correct? OK, you were talking about correctness. So the algorithm is correct if for every single input, it reports the correct output and does not crash and does not run forever. That's really important. Okay, So it, for every input, it does the right thing and doesn't crash ever and doesn't have the wrong input. Okay, Incorrect algorithms may run forever, may crash there. And from now on, we're only considering correct algorithms. How do you know it's correct? For algorithms, you have to mathematically reason about them. For code, actual implementations of the algorithm, you could do testing. And you could do a lot of testing. Can you ever prove it's perfectly working? Never. You can never prove that an implementation of an algorithm is correct, because you might not have tested all the cases. You may have left one case out that you forgot to test. So you can never prove that something works just by testing it. You can only prove it by mathematically reasoning about it if it's correct, OK? In summary now, last one, in summary. When developing an algorithm, you could optimize for one of many things. We talked about efficiency, which is both number of steps and memory as the thing you might be optimizing for. In BJC, we'll consider this suite of six different classes of orders of growth. Many problems can be solved in reasonable time. Reasonable time means non-exponential. And many problems can be solved in that. Okay? Different correct algorithms for the same problem can have different efficiencies. We talked about finding a number in a list. You could have a very simple linear one or a more clever logarithmic one, or if you have infinite storage, a constant time one. Different algorithms, different efficiencies for the same problem. Okay? Finally, some problems cannot be solved in reasonable time, like the subsets problem we just saw in that question. And so it gives you a flavor of what you can do with algorithms and what you can't. We'll see you next time, folks. Thanks again.